Who doesn't love a barbecue on a warm summer day? Or a medium rare steak with teriyaki sauce? Truth is, most of us love eating meat. It is affordable, convenient, and most importantly, yummy. It is estimated that more than 90% of the people in the world are meat eaters. India has the greatest percentage of vegetarians in the world. Around 38% of Indians are either vegans or vegetarians. The United States, on the other hand, is the largest consumer of meat and meat products. Annually, the average American consumes 99 kilograms of meat. However, eating meat is not as good to the environment as it to your taste buds. Consumption of meat is bad for environment in many ways. The first is greenhouse gas emissions. Cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and chickens contribute around 6 billion tons of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere each year. This is around 14.5% of global emissions, which is more than the greenhouse emissions of all the cars, trucks, and automobiles combined. Ruminants, or grass-eating animals, produce methane in a process called enteric fermentation. Grass isn't easily digestible. Ruminants have special microbes in their stomach in order to assist in the digestion of cellulose present in grass and other plants. A large amount of methane is produced as a byproduct of the digestion of food. Most of the methane is burped out by the animal, but some of it is passed out in form of farts. Methane emissions are an important contribution to global greenhouse gas emissions. Methane is more than 20 times as effective as CO2 at trapping heat in the atmosphere. Methane emissions by enteric fermentation exceed the emissions caused by the burning of fossil fuels. Another source of greenhouse gases in meat production is soil management. In order to feed the animals, a lot of feed crops are required. Nitrous oxide is released in soils after the application of synthetic and organic fertilizers, including manure. Soil management activities are the greatest source of nitrous oxide emissions. Several other steps in meat production like processing, packaging, and transporting also lead to the emission of greenhouse gases. To put this all into perspective, Producing a kilogram of beef emits 60 kilograms of greenhouse gases, while producing a kilogram of peas emits just one kilogram of greenhouse gases. The second way is deforestation. Livestock production requires large quantities of harvested feed. The problem with producing animal feed is that large areas of forests have to be cut down to utilize the land for growing feed. It takes almost 7 pounds of feed to produce a pound of beef. In the United States, 127.4 million acres of land is used for growing crops for animal consumption compared to the 77.3 million acres of land used for growing crops for human consumption. Growing so much feed produces an enormous amount of nitrous oxide and other greenhouse gases. The livestock sector is also the primary driver of deforestation in the Amazon. With around 80% of all converted land being used to rear cattle. If grain fed to animals was fed to humans instead, we could feed an extra 3.5 billion people annually. Nearly 60% of the world's agricultural land is used for beef production. Yet, beef accounts for less than 2% of the calories that are consumed throughout the world. The third way is overuse of water. Almost one-third of the water used in the western United States goes to crops that feed cattle. This is a really inefficient use of water. The water required to make one beef patty can make three loaves of bread and 1.5 jars of peanut butter. The beef needs around 10 liters of water per calorie it provides. Cereals, on the other hand, require half a liter of water for providing the same amount of calorie. The fourth way is animal-based. Animals eat food and produce a lot of waste. Water pollution due to animal waste is a common problem in both developed and developing nations. Farmers usually dump animal poop and other waste in the water bodies like lakes. As an example, in China, more than half the freshwater lakes have become polluted, which has led to the rise of diseases such as cholera in many rural communities. Animal wastes produce a lot of methane and nitrous oxide. Untreated waste also pollutes the air with otters and creates health problems. 
Our climate is changing very rapidly. It is important that we all do our part to save our planet. Switching to a vegetarian or a vegan diet all of a sudden can be overwhelming for some of us, but we can cut the amount of meat in our diet. Companies like Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat have been producing plant-based meat that tastes almost identical to real meat. I have been a vegetarian all my life and I have never actually tasted meat in my entire life. If we decide to eat fewer meals with meat or dairy each week, we can have a huge impact on our collective health and health of the planet.